gymnastic routine from Prince Nassim Ahmed. Here's your MC for the night. It's Mike Goodall. Saturday night is Big Fight Night live on ITV and tonight from the National Ice Rink Cardiff Frank Warren and the Sports Network present the Grand Slam of four championship contests for five titles sponsored by Empress Car Sales and proudly present a contest of 12 three minute rounds for the WBC International Super Bantamweight Championship. Between introducing the boxers, fighting from the uh, red corner, coming from the Dominican Republic, a professional record from 18 contests of 17 wins with just one draw, seven wins coming by way of KO. He's the former undefeated IBF Intercontinental Bantamweight Champion, the challenger for the title, Loreno Ramirez. And his opponent, ladies and gentlemen, in the blue corner, wearing the leopard trunks, coming from Sheffield and the Yemen, he is undefeated in 14 contests, 12 contests coming by way of KO. He comes to the ring this evening, the undefeated bantamweight champion of Europe and the international super bantamweight champion, making his first defense of the title. Ladies and gentlemen, Prince Nazina Amir. At the official weigh-in, uh, Ramirez went scaled eight stone seven and three quarter pounds. Ahmed eight stone ten pounds. The WBC International Super Bantamweight Championship. So the pre-fight formalities are over. Let's join your big fight commentary team. It's Jim Watts, and he's alongside the maestro. Good evening to Reg Guthridge. Well, there it is. Uh, the, the referee, Mickey Van, he won't stand for any nonsense here, but he, he was quite controlled by his standards, actually, in that Nassim had. Uh, he's little, compared with you, Bank, he's a little old Fontenoy, I think. But uh, certainly got an unusual gum shield there. Uh, white in the middle, and uh, I think it's black and red. Difficult to tell. Look. Looks a bit like Bugs Bunny when he does a smile as he came down the aisle there. Now, it's all putting the puzzle together, this jigsaw with this boy, whether he really is the real thing. He's certainly beginning to look like it, so well, let's see how Ramirez, who can't be that bad if he's unbeaten, can give us any answers. Well, that was the point. In, in the gymnasium here, we checked on Ramirez. He sparred orthodox, but it was said he was a southpaw. But uh, Ahmed actually asked me that, and I said I wasn't sure, but I think he is. And he said, good, because I like fighting Southport. I think he likes fighting anybody. The man is good, and he loves the acclaim. And uh, Barry McGuigan was saying his last show with another fighter from the Dominion Republic, Freddie Cruz, was absolutely brilliant. So I don't know whether this fellow will provide answers, because he's, he, he, he's never really been in with major names, although he held an, an IBF version of uh, what's called a sort of intercontinental title. That's the, the one below the major title. So although he's barred or, or orthodox in the gymnasium, apparently is a natural southpaw, this fellow. 
See, I think we need to see uh, Hamed against a fighter who's on the up, whose career is rising, who really fancies the game. His, his last two victories have been tremendous, and, and the manner of them has been really breathtaking, but you, you have to see him against someone who really still fancies the game. It was two men who had been well past their best. So it'd be nice to see Hamed against somebody. Maybe Ramirez can answer a few questions here. He looks lively enough, and he's making the Hamed miss, so he's certainly sharp enough. Certainly Ramirez's hairstyle looks handy for him, Jim, almost like a head guard, the thickness of that hair. Oh, well, just one of them, from one of the older school. But he got down to business so well in Sheffield, didn't he, Hamed, and uh, hoping he's going to keep that. And, you know, he's, he's, all the tricks he does, it's very attractive, and he, he can pull it off, and he's, it's marvellous uh, the way he gets away from punches all the time, a real Houdini job. Yeah, he has tremendous reflexes. I mean, he does things that you wouldn't want uh, boys in the gymnasium to do, but he's so good at doing them, he gets away with it. Tremendous reflexes. But he's missing, and he's not bullying Ramirez. Well, he he's not managed to bully this man in the first minute or so, so maybe a couple of questions that will be answered. Well, there's one thing for sure, the, the world crowd are not particularly on his side. They, they cheered the Dominican Republic guy there. He incidentally lives in Barcelona, actually, now. First visit to Britain. When he stands his ground there, Jim Hammond, you know, he's, he's really such a competent boxer, he doesn't need all the frippery to go with it. Yeah, but I suppose if you want to become a big name like in the entertainment world, you need a little bit extra, and I think he's got that. Just a, a short, sharp word there from the referee, Mickey Van, back to your corner. So that's, he's been with Brendan Ingle now, Hamed, since he was seven years old. He's, he loves the game, he's always in gymnasiums, trains very hard indeed, goes and watches his pals. He's, he's just in love with boxing and success the age of 20. There he is, make me look pretty for the cameras, I bet he's saying that. And he's not been beyond the six rounds, 11 fights inside four rounds, this fellow. Super bantamweight, eight stone, 10 pounds, 122 pounds. That's between uh, bantam and featherweight. Almost like the styptic pencil he's using there, it's a bit unusual. So, second round then. Try and do his usual catch as catch can job here, Hamid Jim. Yeah, he's just trying to draw a lead at the moment, that's what he's doing. Yeah. But then in his last two fights against quality opposition, he's managed to bully the opposition right from the first bell in the, in the European fight. He floored the opponent straight away as the first bell rang. Well, he hasn't done that here. A fairly quiet start by his own standards, but he's not been hit. He's just a little bit untidy. It's amazing, he has no occupational fear at all, is he? He's not getting his own punches home yet. I don't, I don't think this, this fella cares anything about the showbiz size, but he wants to get on with it. Well, his movements are sharp enough. The couple of times eh, Hamid has tried to draw him into a mistake, he's managed to pull his head out of range. So at least his movements are sharp enough, so Hamid is going to have to go looking for this fellow, step up a little bit closer. Way you want it. 
Oh, good shots for that man. You know, once he goes to work, you always get the feeling he can do it when he, when he decides it's time. Okay, a couple of points in this fight, he's looked a little bit untidy. And that was the sort of shot that he caught Freddy Cruz with that turned the whole fight with lead uppercut. Yeah, but Ramirez is still moving nice and sharply. Yeah. He's not managing to land any counters, but he's making Hamed miss. So at least he's going to draw out a kind of decent performance from him. Hamed's stepping a little bit closer now, trying to get that jab on target. It's almost in slow motion that, isn't it? Look. I'm just trying to draw the lead. See, the crowd will go, I knew they'd do that. Started in the open round, hardly a clean punch landed, but there was just a spell there from Hamad. He, he tries to lock people out with every punch he throws. So that's why he's sort of taken his time. We've seen him do this in, in longer distance fights before. So Lad Ramirez at 28, he, he boxed in the Los Angeles Olympics, I should remember that. He got, he got to the quarterfinals. I didn't turn pro to the 23. The thing is, uh, Ramirez hasn't shown an awful lot of ambition himself in, in the first couple of rounds. Uh, I think he realises this early just how difficult it is to catch uh, Hamid. But if he wants some success, he's going to have to step in himself and try to get these punches off. He, a little bit apprehensive uh, with his own punches, Ramirez. Well, he's, he's, he's just poking that right hand out. That's not. You couldn't call that a jab. He knew what happened to his countryman, Freddie Cruz. That was better. Oh, that was better. That was better. You see, now he took a decent shot. Oh, that was naughty. A definite yeah, push there. The referee, the crowd don't like that. The referee has got to do something about that. Yeah. I mean, that was both elbows in his face almost. That was outrageous. Mickey Van has to have a word with him about this. Yeah, I said. I said from the start, he won't stand for it. Handled the Bruno and Lewis fight, he's handled many top world championships. He said to him, Okay, he's given him as long enough rest as he wants. Well, oh, now we're going to get a little bit of spite entering into it now. Yeah, that I, was think, silly, I think he lost it? his temper a bit there. I think he's annoyed himself. He knows by his own standards that uh, this is not his best form. So far, he's been, up, been able to back up his boast, and uh, I'm sure he probably will do here but I'd like I'd like to see it just a bit cleaner he's got moving the quality stuff and that was the best punch he's landed so far that was a good little solid that oh, wow. one Same punch oh he's turned away he doesn't want it this guy does he what's happened there I don't know if I took it I get the impression there's it's possible I took has been loosened with that punch Weird. oh well that was his jaw was loosened with that he, he, he just dropped over there like that laundry fall, falling on the floor, but he, there was something wrong with his tooth there. Now he doesn't want it. Doesn't I think he didn't. Yeah, I get the impression he's, that he's, he's quit in the list. third round. Uh, well, he didn't expect that, or we didn't expect that. I suppose Hamid says, yes, I did expect that. But Jimmy, you were quite right. It looked as though he had a problem with the tooth there as he turned away. It must, it must hit with some strength, this guy, you know, I mean, he's a rough old customer, Ramirez, he's been around a bit and unbeaten. Admittedly, as I said at the start, not with major names, but a good old pro, there are, Dad gives him a crisp as well. Yeah, well, probably not his smoothest performance, but uh, when you don't box your best, it's nice if you can finish it with one shot, and that's exactly what he's done. The finishing shot was a beauty, the punch that set it up looked to me, the way he looked away and pointed to his mouth, it was as though maybe a tooth had been listened to with that shot. This is the one, bang it. That was right in the mouth, and that's when he turned away, and it's quite possible that there was some damage to maybe his tooth with that punch. I'm not sure, but that's what it looked like. 
Yeah, the referee did well there, but turned him round and you know made sure that he wanted to carry on. He couldn't just stop it because he had his back to the opponent. Yeah, well, I think after that punch, he didn't really want to go on. The finishing punch was a beauty. Oh, bang. Bingo, he had that no option there, did he? The lights were out for it. Soon recovered, mind you. But this kid can punch him. Oh, yeah, see, he has natural power. If you look at the, the strength he has in his legs and the way he sets himself, I mean, and when you look at Hamed's legs, you see he can go up a couple of divisions and uh, once he fills out a bit. 